Here's our centre case top and again this is a pretty easy process but uh, what we've done with this is uh, we've had to trim the Ford end just to make it to the right length which is pretty much the way the design is done. Uh, the rear here is pretty much lining up with the back side of this. You can see we've only got two holes drilled in. We drilled these holes in here so that we could uh, get a sighting on the uh, inside of this uh, post here for the centre case and know where that is. Um, that allowed us to pull the board back here um, a distance. The distance being the thickness of a steel ruler that we were using um, so that we could pull this edge here at the back end of the slot the distance of that ruler away. So here's the steel rule that we use. So with this down in here, we had it uh, sitting so that this edge here then came to the front edge of the post, which is about here. Okay. So if you imagine, that's where the rule is sitting on top of the post, but this whole center case top is moved back so that this edge of the ruler is at the back end of the center case slot. Uh, so the center case top slot that we're going to cut. Now, will it move back that known distance from where we want it? It's then a simple matter of laying the ruler over the front of the centre case top, hard up against this bulkhead, and then scribing across the back end here. That means is that when we shift the whole lot forward, this known amount, the distance of the ruler, this piece here is going to line up with the uh, front side of that post. And this will lie across the bulkhead. Now look at the, attaching the deck. The deck uh, comes out of a single piece of um, plywood of 2.4 by 1.2. Um, we've simply on the stern here cut a strip off the one end of the plywood. Um, what we've done is we've actually then turned that strip around so that the nice machined edge of the plywood is up against this bulkhead. We've done a similar thing with the bow and um, all these that have occurred now is they've been placed on and they've been trimmed uh, reasonably to shape with a bit of a hanger over here that we can plane off once the deck is attached. The remaining piece that you'll have uh, is cut in half across and um, then a section cut off the side of this so that Effectively that piece lays from here, down to the cockpit, and then up the other side. What we're doing on this boat is just slightly different, and you need a little bit of scrap plywood or extra plywood to do this. Um, because this person is varnishing the cockpit of their boat, we don't want to see a transition uh, on this piece here of coming up the side. So let me show you what that looks like. So here we've got the deck structure put in place on my boat and you can see that this transition between the ply down onto the, uh, the wood of the carland and then down onto the cockpit side. This is fine if you're painting as I am, but if you're varnishing then this transition of woods um, doesn't look the best. So step by step this is how we fit these pieces together. First of all I uh, put the rear deck in place and uh, this can either be glued or just temporarily uh, stapled into a fixed position so we know where this is. We can then do these uh, cockpit sides so the wood uh, plywood just needs to be cut to length. We slot it down into our cockpit and we use a bit of wood uh, with a pencil on just to run through and that scribes the curve on the bottom of the cockpit side which can then be cut. This one is a little bit trickier because we need to bring this other piece of wood we've got here which is going to sit on the top of our carlin. Here it is sitting on top of the carlin and you can see how these two pieces come together. So Vaughan's done a very nice job here in uh, bringing those together. You should also be able to see the angle cut onto the side of these and uh, onto the side of the cockpit piece as well. Um, so that's required to bring those together at that angle. 
the side deck uh, simply it slots over and in. It also has that angle as well, um, but it's uh, far easier. These two pieces have to be the exact size. Over here on Lance's boat, we can see the cockpit side um, having been glued in. Um, and on this one here, uh, it's been left uh, higher and this will be playing down to the angle of the cockpit side here. The reason uh, we've done it this way, so this is very similar to my boat, but Lance is going to uh, varnish his boat as well. So he is actually going to uh, put another piece of ply here to get a nice uh, joint between the deck and the side of the carlin here. Um, but he's going to run this bit of ply over here because he's got paint from here down. So how you finish your boat is going to determine a little bit in how you do your decking as well. Also, how you want that to look. Getting this joint between the uh, deck and the side deck um, nice and neat. The way that I do that is with this deck piece uh, lined up with the carlin where you want it, if you just move it forward slightly so there's a bit of a gap, you can get this uh, steel ruler and put it uh, up against that nice straight edge which then gives you a, another nice straight edge down the side of your side decking which you can scribe with a Stanley knife or a sharp knife to cut through that veneer and then uh, cut to that line and, and plane up to it which should give you a nice straight edge which you know is a perfect match to this uh, aft decking. What we do then is we move that forward as you can see that joint there we move that forward at the front end to uh, get the same sort of uh, joint here. Uh, what we do there is that this one has been already cut to length. But this would normally be longer. And what we do is we sit that side decking under the forward decking so that we have an overlap. And then we use a sharp knife to scribe down uh, on the aft end of the forward deck. Uh, which means that uh, everything will fit into place, they're at the right angles and uh, it should look quite nice. Here's a finished joint um, between the rear deck and the side deck. Um, this appears to stand out uh, quite strongly at the moment but mainly that is because the epoxy has just darkened this piece of wood here. If we go to the fourth deck you can see an area where I have already epoxied and how dark that comes up. So you can imagine that once we get back to uh, here and we've uh, epoxied all over here then that joint will start to disappear. Um, obviously not so much of a concern on my boat because I'm painting it. The other final consideration on this joint is just really the substructures underneath and uh, are they at the same level. Here um, where they are going to join um, they will both sit on a reasonably similar um, position and they actually sit down very level. Um, so what we don't really want is one being up or down slightly, you know, a millimetre uh, because to, especially if you're going to varnish a deck your top veneer is really only about a millimetre thick so you may end up sanding right through that veneer and down into a very dark piece of glue uh, to get them level. So the only real safe way to do this is to make sure your uh, substructure over here that's supporting that deck when you're putting it on is level.